come to rain in Australia? <laughs> it's so gorgeous, isn't it? But it's cold. It is. <laughs> in the little mini. <laughs> I have to say, Rhodes New South Wales is so lucky with their grounds there. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Mm. You know, those spreading lawns and those beautiful old jacaranda trees. You know, it used to be a mental asylum. Oh, well, perfect place for a gathering of authors then, <laughs> isn't it? We'll feel exactly. right at home. To go mad in Roselle. <laughs> <laughs> going, going, or already gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to admit I'm a bit nervous today because it's my first time I behind know. the camera filming. So, uh, who, who are you going to uh, interview today? Well, I know how much you love children's fantasy, Sarah, since yes. you are a writer of children's fantasy yourself. So, I have picked three of Australia's most brilliant children's fantasy writers. We're talking to Garth Nix. Oh, lovely. Oh, amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. The author of Liriel and Sabriel, and his new book is called Fog Kisser. It's a kind of, you know, the fog prints fractured. Um, and then we're talking to Jacqueline Moriarty, who's just in, so enchanting. Her book is called uh, The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone. That's a mouthful. <laughs> it's a great title. <laughs> it is, I like it. I had it. to learn it off by heart. <laughs> And then we are going to talk to my beautiful sister, Belinda Morell, who, as you know, um, is a, a children's writer, as well as being the director of the festival today. Right. Oh, do, do you think they'll have any champagne? I'm sure they've got some champagne hidden away just for us. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. South Wales celebrating the kids and young adult literary festival Yay! and here we are with my beautiful sister <laughs> who is the director of the festival. It's been a huge success, crowds of people hearing everything there is to know about reading and writing for kids. Belinda, congratulations on an amazing festival. Thank you sweetie. I, we must be so pleased it's come off so well. So thrilled, complete sellout, waiting list, so exciting. Everyone's just raving about it, which is great. And what do you think has been the highlight of the festival so far? Oh, I just have loved every moment of it. From the moment we arrived, it was this fantastic in conversation with Jacqueline Harvey, who's just a mega star. She author. made us she was... laugh, she made us cry. It was absolutely <laughs> fabulous. And then the, um, my personal favorite was the Girl Power panel, because mm. that's a passion that's close to my heart, is the importance of having strong female protagonists. So that was really, really important to me. But then all the other panels have been great, talking about humor, talking about fantasy, talking about the business of writing, which has been really important. That was a very popular session, I have to say. I was on the panel. Yes. But I think it was popular because it was about the business of writing, how to make a living as a writer. And it went on and on. They wouldn't let you go. So mm. everybody was so hungry for knowledge that they just kept chatting and talking well after the session. Probably should have finished. I know, but it's a sign of just how popular this festival has been. So as you know, here on Word of Mouth TV, we love to talk about food as well as talking about yes. books. And my sister, Belinda is an amazing cook. Thank you, darling. That's my pleasure. Many a great meal at my sister's house. <laughs> Can you tell me what is your favorite thing to cook? My favorite thing to cook? Mm. Well, uh, my favorite thing to cook is just stuff that my family loves to eat, which is often just quite simple food, whether it might be a beautiful Greek roast lamb or an absolutely beautiful, I don't know, Italian pasta with lots of parmesan cheese and lots of lovely fresh herbs from mm. the garden. So it's really about gathering my family around the table and eating food that they love to eat. And I have to tell you that Belinda makes the most amazing lemon curd cake, which is my favorite cake in the world. <laughs> and she makes me one nearly every single birthday. And it did star 
own a book, The Forgotten Pearl. It so, did. Yes. <laughs> That's right. So we'll post a recipe for you so you can cook it as well. And it's wonderful because when I go to visit schools all around Australia, librarians make it for me all the time and it's so good. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> and the other thing that they're making a lot of is the cupcakes from Pippa's Island, which is, mm. I went to a school last week and they had made dozens and dozens and dozens of these beautiful little Cece's lemon cup cupcakes. And it would be so rude not to eat them. Absolutely. You, they were you, just, I mean, you just could not eat little them. Little ones for the kids and they made me a lovely big one. <laughs> <laughs> so one final question. Yes. I know that you are a very big reader and that you read a lot and very, very widely. What is the best book that you've read recently? Well, the book I have just finished reading was Frog Kisser by Garth Nix, which I absolutely, absolutely loved. So I've been reading lots of books for the festival. So I've just read Kenzie and Max by Jacqueline Harvey, which I loved. I just read this, the stupendously spectacular Spelling Bee by Deborah Bella, which I absolutely loved. And so I've just been reading all of these wonderful mm. kids' books, which um, is fantastic. In terms of adult books, I've just read The Jade Lily by Kirsty Manning, which I read um, a couple of weeks ago. I learned that to yes, you. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So it's been um, a fantastic, you know, I just love reading books. So. Well, congratulations again on an absolutely wonderful festival. It's been so buzzy, everyone. There's such a feeling of community and kinship and friendship and support amongst the children's I know. writing They've community. They've all been laughing all day and just having the best time, which has been fantastic. Thank you again, and thank Pleasure. you for joining us on Word of Mouth TV. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Well, I'm going to mention an old favourite because I just reread it this week, which is The Curse of Chalian by Lois McMaster Bujol. I, I love which that is, book. I love that book too. I think I've read it three times now. Um, and I do reread all my old favourites. Uh, and it's it's just it's a really good fantasy. I like it on very many elegant, different levels. Isn't it? It's a very elegantly written it's, fantasy. It's clever and engaging, mm. and I, I love the world that she's created. And she revisits mm. in lots of other other books now. Um, and it was just it was just fun. And I I like to reimmerse myself in yeah, in books too. that I love. So I actually just I just reread that the other day. So that, that's mm. my that's my favourite. At this exact moment in time. <laughs> there you go, Garth. We know that you love to eat. What's your favourite meal? <laughs> I have many favourite meals, very many. Um, I find it hard to go past really, really excellent sausages and mash mm. with fresh peas. It's very basic, I know, but I, I do really love it. And I actually don't eat it very often <laughs> since half, half, half my family's become vegetarian. Um, that would be one of my all-time favourites. But I, I love so many other things. Food is wonderful. Food is wonderful. And so books. books and, and food. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Garth. It's been lovely to talk to you again. And here we are at Writing New South Wales, celebrating the Kids and Young Adult Literary Festival. And I have here the wonderful Jacqueline Moriarty, whose a latest book I absolutely adored. Would you mind telling us all about it, please, Jackie? Sure. Um, the Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Meadowstone is the story of a 10-year-old girl who has just learned that her parents have been killed by pirates. But she's not particularly bothered by that because she was raised by her aunt Isabel after her parents abandoned her as a baby to go off having adventures. However, her parents have left a will behind which instructs her to go on a journey delivering treasure to her ten other aunts across the kingdoms and empires and they have put a border of fairy cross stitch around the will which means that uh, she has to follow every instruction precisely or the fairy cross stitch will break which will mean her hometown crumbles to pieces. Yes, it's a big quest and I have to say that it is just full of charm and whimsy and humour and wonder that I was actually, I, I, I read a lot of it in a warm bath which is why I was laughing at you before when you talked about being in a warm bath and it was like being this wonderful uh, surrender to the type of books that I loved to read when I was a kid. Now there was a lot about food in the Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone. Can you talk to us a little bit about the food in the book and why it's so important to you in your life? Food is important in the book partly because Bronte's um, parents in their instructions, as well as telling her the mode of transport she should get to go between from aunt to aunt and what time she should arrive at each aunt's house and wh what time she needs to <laughs> give them the treasure, they also put in lots of recommendations. Some of those are not obligatory, but recommendations for places where she could stop and try the try the cheesecake or the or, or the hot chocolate or, or the, the hot yeah. chocolate or <laughs> yeah the hot chocolate on the, in the mountain cafe so there are places where food is important to the quest but there are also kinds of food i there are so many kinds of foods hard to choose in the mm -hmm. book um but there's she goes to visit an aunt who has an orange orchard and the aunt says never try an orange from the empire of the, the ricochet, the tiny empire of ricochet, because that will spoil you for all other oranges, they're so good. Mm -hmm. And then as Bronte leaves her aunt's place, she calls out and says, actually, if you get a chance to try a ricochet orange, you've got to do it. <laughs> so um, at, at some point later, she's going to try a ricochet orange. And there's also a kind of chocolate. Mm -hmm. And this is important because I wrote the book um, in different cafes. Each chapter was supposed to be written in a different uh, cafe, but I kept getting drawn back to a chocolate cafe. So there's a cafe in my neighborhood called Coco Chocolate, oh. which um, is this tiny little room with chocolate all around the walls and chocolate on the table. And they make a, um, what's it called? There's a rose and black pepper chocolate, uh -huh. which I put in the book there. Rose so no there. wonder there's so much about food in the book, because you were writing it in cafe surrounded by delicious surrounded food. By food yes. So do you love to cook? I love to I love to cook. I especially love to bake. I do like cooking, but I'm not a very good cook at regular savory food. If I am ever feeling agitated, if I'm really happy or I'm really sad or I'm stressed, then I will um, melting chocolate and butter on the stove just 
calms me. So There's something so meditative about yes. it, isn't it? I, I love it as well. The it's a very earthing thing. Yes, you know, exactly. mixing things mixing together things. and it's using your hands and your body. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, what's your favorite meal of all time? My favorite meal of all time was oh, there's so many. I just came back from New Orleans yeah. where there was we had several wonderful meals. Those have you had those ban beignets? Those, no. They're a kind of donut pastry that quite famous in New Orleans, so I love them, and the jambalaya meals, mm. I, and uh, I've, yeah, my favorite meal of all time would probably focus on the dessert part. I love those degustation. I love those you, as well, because I love yeah, lots of little delicious lots things little to things, eat. Yeah. Now, Jackie, as you know, on Word of Mouth TV, we love to help spread the word about as many different writers and books as we possibly can, and so I've asked you to think very carefully about what's the best book that you've read recently. I read a lot and very fast, mm. and so I am always have this awareness that I've just read something wonderful. So the thing that comes to mind right now is Frog Kisser by Garth Nix. Yes. Because I found that I love all of his books, but this is my favorite of his, I think, mm. because there's so much humor and life, liveliness and adventure in it. So I'll choose Frog Kisser. Yes, I loved Frog Kisser as well. So thank you so much for joining us, Jackie. It's a Lovely thank to you see so you. much. You too. Yes, Lovely and I hope you. that. Bronte Metalstone's adventures go on forever. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, bye bye. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. And if you want to enter our giveaway, or know more about our fantastic prizes, or try any of our delicious recipes, or know all about our news, views, and reviews, then just go to our website at wordofmouthtv.com.au. See you next time.